Previously, I made T-Bot to serve humanity, but instead it demanded more wages. So I had to abandon this project. It was too much for me. I decided to took out its component and make other projects out of it. And it hasn't been sitting there since. Oh, wait. Hold on. <laughs> You're not supposed to see this yet. Joking aside, I actually have been working on T-Bot for several months now, and there's a lot of major changes and upgrades. I really want to make this practical, so I did a lot of research on desktop robots. Most of the robots are just kind of cute and fun, while there are some that they just put AI and answer simple questions. But none of them are really helpful, you know? Until I saw this YouTuber who really made my jaw drop. He built this robot from scratch and uses his computer for some really interesting applications. But we're going to try to replicate that and put some flavors to our T-Bot. Now before we dive into the project, there are several rules that I set to myself. One is the cost. I want to make it as cheap as possible so people can build it. And two, we're just going to use simple 3D printing and some soldering. No heavy equipment because most of us don't have it anyway. This project turns out to be more difficult than I anticipated because it touches on three domains. The mechanical, the electrical, and the software programming. And one of them is not my strong suit at all. I'll tell you what it is later on, but this is probably the worst fear I have and I have to face this fear. But I see it as a challenge to grow and learn. Here, I'm doing some redesign work to upgrade my T-Bot. I'm going to add LCD screen to it and some other sensors, like the gesture sensor for hand tracking. While we're doing that, there's one thing we need to figure out is how do we control the robot arm to control the volume? Hmm, let's think about it. So the servo has potentiometers in there and they read the voltage based on the angle that it's turning. And there's actually a way to hack through it if you can solder wire to expose that potentiometer. And from there, we get an idea of it. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's take off the T-Bot's arm, take off the screw and gut it out the internal components so we can get the potentiometer. So we want to read the middle pin that is the potentiometer. So we're gonna solder it with the wire. Once you solder it and you connect to the Arduino, you should be able to read through an analog signal just like this. And with a little bit of coding, we can map the angle to the volume of our PC like this. Continuing our prototype, I am using a ESP32 LCD touchscreen. It's basically like a smartwatch, but we can program it. And we're going to use this for the T-Bot's head. So we can control different modes and see some different displays, like the animations. Since it's a ESP32, it also comes with several GPIO pins that we can have an input and output, which we'll use it later on. What's nice about this is you can also use a USB-C to program it. We can also use the TXRX from the back of the GPIO pins to send signals and receive signals from the Arduino. This LCD screen also comes with an IMU sensor. So you could technically do some crazy stuff with accelerations and orientations or even shaking around this LCD screen. But for simplicity, we're going to skip this ahead. To program this ESP32, we're going to use Squareline. It's very comprehensive and it's like developing an app for the watch. So you just program it, you load some screens and some make some animations for it. Right now, I already have servos and the LCD screen and just putting it together so we can do some testing already. On your Sunday clothes, there's lots of world out there. Get out the brilliant team and dime cigars. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention I have a gesture sensor, which you can see I'm swiping around the sensor, it does some controls. There are several hand gestures you can do, but I'll show you later. That being said, having all these sensors and servos fitting inside T-Bot was very painful. It's like putting all your house items into a minivan, and you have to drive that minivan. Except this is how many minivans you've broken before getting it to work. Thankfully, I found some ways to do it and minimize the spacing, but in the future, I believe I can make it even smaller.
Okay, I am back. It is after a few days of coding. At this point, my project is getting a little bit messy. You can see at the back, all my wires are getting poking out and tangling each other. And I know at some point I have to do some PCB design in order to make it nice and look like an actual product. So I was just explaining how scared I am, but it wasn't all too bad. It was pretty easy. And I thankfully, thankfully I have help from my friends. So I shout out to them. I got a simple schematic. I was just drawing, doodling to know how I'm going to wire this later on because I, I want to do some PCB design. It's going to be my first time. I've never done it. So I'm a little scared. I feel like I've messed up somewhere. Messed up somewhere. Messed up somewhere. And so I did mess up a lot, but I also learned from my mistakes. Mistakes that took over two weeks to fix all of them. And here are some lessons. Number one, power all your parts properly. Servos and motors are generally very hungry to have used power compared to other sensors. So don't rely on Arduinos to expect them to power all your servos and motors. And in fact, it's al almost always better to have an external battery or external power. I'm trying to limit myself because I really just want to use a computer to connect with it. Second, share a common ground. All your sensors and motors should connect back to the same ground point. This keeps signal consistent so your board knows what zero me really means and you also reduce a lot with sensor noises. And third, don't be afraid of imperfect fixes. Even though a rough or temporary solution is better than being stuck with no solutions at all. And here's a bonus tip. Sometimes if you get stuck, just ask other people. I was fortunate to have people to help me. I use ChatGPT and I'm not ashamed of it. But eventually it got me to arrive at a solution and I was pretty happy about it. Just a day after finishing my PCB design, I had a power outage. Watching these power line worker repairing the power grid made me appreciate a lot that I only have to power enough for T-Bot, while they have to make sure all the neighborhood gets enough power. Good morning guys, it is 12 p.m. It's actually noon. And just got my coffee. I was working on KiCad up till pretty late last night, but it is, KiCad is fun. Like doing wiring, it's like uh, if you play Terraria, that's a lot of wiring in there or Minecraft, those kind of games. Um, you just wire a bunch of stuff and coloring and then you get to see your final kind of your final product there in 3D view. So pretty excited, it's my first time doing this. Ask a lot of questions from my friend, Albert. Shout out to Albert. Um, but yeah, it's really fun, I recommend it. <laughs> so. And once you finish up your PCB design, you're supposed to generate a Gerber file or Gerber file. Then we're gonna use PCBWay since they are technically the sponsor of this project. Thank you, PCBWay. We're going to go ahead and try it, upload the Gerber file. It's pretty quite straightforward. Most of the stuff and options, you don't have to change them. Let's use two layers, since four layers significantly up prices, up charges. The color does not have anything. It doesn't change the cost, so we're going to keep it at that. And all you have to do is save to cart. And what happens next is an engineer will review your PCB design. And since this is my first time, there were some mistakes. The engineers were quickly to spot it. And we did some a little bit short review on that. I re-upload a new Gerber file and they were able to approve it. And it took only about two weeks to ship it. They also have a Gerber viewer so you can check your PCB design and to make sure it is to your liking. So it looks like PCBWay has other services like 3D printing and some CNC machining tool parts, which I'm pretty excited about and I wanted to use it in the future. The default order comes with five PCB boards and after quickly checking the connectivity, I was pretty happy about it and I really like this black color. I also designed a little T-Bot logo there if you haven't noticed it.
I decided to name this new T-Bot Clever, because it has several modes. The default one can do simple moves with hand control. In the second mode, you can control your computer's volume, like you saw earlier. On top of that, you can program different functionalities. Like this one, I am swiping my windows left and right. You can also do it clockwise to turn on a timer or different apps. And likewise, you can open a browser too. So what if your window gets clustered? Well now you can swipe up, swipe right, swipe down, swipe left. Needed to hide away your desktop? to simply pull away from Clever. And once you're done with work, you can just wave goodbye and it'll log out from the computer. I wanted to create an app so I can control Clever with my cell phone or computer, but this project has taken way too long, so I'll just leave it at that. This Pomodoro icon is supposed to track your time for studying or work, reminding you to take a break. But I haven't figured out how to do it, so I'll leave it to that. Lastly, the dance mode allows you to directly control Clever with your webcam. Here, I am using MediaPy body tracking with Python script to control the servos. And that's the end of the video. Let me know what other functions would you add to Clever. And I'll see you next time. Honey